hi guys um, good evening uh, YouTube today I'm gonna tell you about the uh, about the sweat chloride test I think you know about the sweat chloride test how it is done is not so much important for USMLE but we need to know the differential diagnosis for the false positive sweat chloride test before that briefly I would like to tell you about the sweat chloride test the minimum area we should uh, have on the skin to collect the sweat for a sweat chloride test is uh, should not be less than uh, the sweat should not be less than 75 milligram on 2 inch by 2 inch stimulated skin area okay the normal values varies with the age if the patient is less than 20 years including children and adult up to the age of 20 the normally the sweat chloride normally it is there on the skin it is 0 to 40 okay millimole per liter you can call it as a borderline or indeterminate that is 41 to 60 okay normally it is 0 to 40 and uh, what you call is uh, borderline is 41 to 60 okay consistent with the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis that if the values are more than okay if the values are more than 60 then it's confirmed that the patient is having cystic fibrosis dear friends you do sweat chloride test you won't do sweat chloride test on each and every patient when you are suspecting clinically you do cystic to confirm it as a cystic fibrosis you do sweat chloride test okay and the one thing I would like to tell you that uh, cystic fibrosis um, it runs in some is more common in European and it runs in the some kind of families so okay so it's a genetically related I think it's a it's a autosomal recessive okay okay now the right thing is if the adult is more than 20 years then the, it is consistent with the cystic fibrosis more than 70 okay adult that is more than 20 years of age okay 20 years of age then uh, Value should be more than 70 to diagnose cystic fibrosis. Okay. Okay. Let me go to the main uh, thing. What I was going to tell you about. What uh, this is what I'm going to tell you that. Uh, okay. The false positive. False positive. Sweat chloride test. Okay. The false positive means. If you do the sweat chloride test in these patients, what I'm going to explain you, in these patients you can get the sweat chloride test, the sweat chloride more than 60, okay? So the diseases which includes are, first is, I would like to tell you anorexia nervosa, okay? Guys, this is very helpful for your MRCP CH examinations and even for your USNLA examinations. Okay, you need to buy these things anorexia nervosa, then we have uh, ecodermal dysplasia. Ecodermal dysplasia. Okay, then we have uh, atomic, uh, atopic, sorry, atopic uh, dermatitis. Then we have uh, autonomic dysfunction. Autonomic dysfunction. Okay. Then um, we have familial cholestasis. Familial cholestasis. Then we have fucosidosis. Fuco 
sine 2 cc. G6 PD deficiency. Even in the patients with a G6 PD deficiency, you can see this uh, elevated uh, sweat chlorides. Okay. Then we have. Uh, it can be seen in glycogen storage disease type one. Glycogen storage disease type one. Okay. Then uh, it can be seen in client filter syndrome. Okay. Then uh, mucopolysaccharidosis type one. Then even it is seen in the nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Okay. Even it can be seen in protein calorie mal malnutrition, usually in the children. Okay. Protein calorie malnutrition. Okay. Even it is seen in the adrenal insufficiency that is untreated, untreated adrenal insufficiency. Okay, adrenal insufficiency. Even seen in untreated. Look, guys, this is the untreated. Okay, not in adrenal insufficiency. Once the patient started with the treatment, then it may not be seen, but it it is untreated. You know, undiagnosed retributed the light throat then suddenly he can have this uh, increased sweat test okay untreated also thyroidism there are other few causes also there are many causes for this but these are the most important uh, causes what i elaborated okay this is a list of uh, um, what you call uh, um, the cystic fibrosis list of uh, fast positive um, set cry test. Okay, guys. Uh, okay, is, uh, let me revise once again. Anorexia nervosa, ecodermal dysplasia, atopic dermatitis, autonomic dysfunction, familial cholestasis, phycocytosis, G6PD deficiency, glycogen storage disease type 1, Klein filter syndrome, mucopolysaccharidosis type 1, and, and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus, okay, and protein calorie mal malnutrition, untreated adrenal insufficiency, and hypothyroidism. Okay, guys, I hope you will like it, and let me know by liking and disliking. Okay, thank you.